Hello, I'm going to be going over some of the exercises from Algebra 2, Lesson 5.5. I think I'm going to do just one, because um, I think they all go A through D. So I'll just do one of each. So question one, uh, I'll do the last one. Uh, 1D, describe how e function uh, transforms the graph. So there's four different things happening, actually. Uh, problem A just has one thing, problem B has two things, problem C has three things. So I pick problem D because it's got four things happening. And the goal is just to explain what is uh, happening with each of those things. So the first thing I see in the front is a negative. We actually talked about negatives in lesson four of this packet, but what a negative does, maybe I can just type this. What a negative does is it uh, just reflects it. And a negative in front of the function is gonna reflect it vertically. So it flips down or we could say reflex vertically. So I'll leave it up to you if you wanna go the mathier way, reflex vertically, or the more simpler way, flips down, they mean the same thing. So the negative causes the graph to flip upside down. Uh, I see a four in front. The number four is what was new from this exercise or from this lesson. And any number being multiplied in the front of a graph causes a vertical dilation. So the simple way would be stretch vertically. Um, let me say stretch tall, or we could say dilate vertically. And maybe I'm going to add in front that um, this is the negative. The negative causes it to flip down. Uh, this is the four. The four causes it to stretch tall or dilate vertically. Uh, next, I see a plus one. Uh, we learned about plus one a couple lessons back, but any number being added to the x is actually gonna cause the whole graph to slide to the left. Uh, so the one causes the graph to slide left. And if we wanna talk about that using our technical terminology, that is translate horizontally. And then there's one more piece and that's the plus five at the back. And when we talked about any number being added or subtracted at the back, that caused the whole graph to slide up and down. And because that is a plus, it's gonna slide up uh, if you want to use the technical terms, that would be translate vertically. So the goal of exercise one is to explain what each piece in the equation does. So what does this three do? What does this three do? What does this two do? What does this two thirds do? What does this negative do? And what does this minus three do? Looking at exercise two, uh, I think I'm going to just stick with picking the last one in each case because it generally is the most difficult one. Um, but we're going to start with the equation, and our goal is to write the equation by incorporating all of these different pieces into it. So if I look at graph letter D, and I think this is going to be easier for me to write it out. Uh, I know I have a y equals, that's how we generally start these equations. And I know that this is an absolute value, so I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I'm probably going to fill something in here. But I have my absolute value graph, and I'm going to leave a little bit of space, and I'm going to close it off. So my goal is to take each of these components and fill it in where it would go. So if I see dilate vertically by factor of two, I know that that is a two in the front. It says dilate horizontally by factor of three. I know that that is a divide three at the back. So vertical dilations are always multiplied in the front. Horizontal dilations are always divided at the back. A reflect vertically was from the previous lesson, but a vertical reflection is always a negative in the front. If it's at a horizontal reflection, so I see horizontal reflection over here, a horizontal reflection is always a negative in front of the x. So I got the vertical dilation, I got the horizontal dilation, I got the vertical reflection. Now I see translate left four. So translate left and right means it's gonna go by the x. A plus goes to the right and a minus goes to the left. Did I say that backwards? I think I said that backwards. Minus goes to the right and a plus goes to the left. So because it says left four, I need a plus four. And then the last piece says down five when we're translating vertically, that's gonna be plus or minus in of a way at the back. Because it's down, that's gonna be a minus five. So I have a V-shaped graph. It slid to the left four and down five. Left four and down five. It got flipped upside down and it got stretched. Now this is gonna be kind of a bad graph because most of the graph kind of falls off the page, but there it is. That's my V-shaped graph. It flipped down, it got stretched a little bit, and uh, it moved over four and down five. 
and we'll add some little arrows at the end there. And we got one more, which is writing equations based on graphs. So exactly reverse of here. Here we had information, wrote an equation, drew a graph. Here we have graphs. We're going to write an equation. Um, I'm going to go P. Yeah, last one, P, is probably the most complicated. Uh, these are all V-shaped graphs. So every one of these graphs is going to have the bars. Okay. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing as this last piece. We're going to have to fill in a whole bunch of numbers to see what we have going on here. So I'm going to start with the translation of this graph. I think that's the easiest thing. From the origin, it moved to the right one, and it moved down. Looks like one, two, three. So I'm going to write y equals. I know that it's going to have a negative in front because the v opens down. If the v opens up, there'll be a positive. I'm going to leave a space for my dilation factor, and I said it was to the right one, so that's a minus one, and it was down three, so that's a minus three. Now that dilation factor at the front, basically think of it as slope. I'm going to use the parameter A, but it's rise over run. So if we go and find two points that fall right on that line, we can count what the rise is and what the run is. So from this point, and I'm going to just follow along till I find my first point that falls right on the grid lines. That is down 2 and over 3. So my rise and my run is 2 and 3. Now technically, this minus here is already that going down. So I wouldn't want to do a minus negative. But so it's going down 2, and it's going to the right 3, so that's 2 over 3. Um, now actually, if I look at this one up here, uh, this down 2 and then this over 3, whether that over 3 comes in the front of the absolute value symbols or right behind it, it doesn't actually change anything. So this negative 2 thirds is exactly the same as this negative 2 thirds, whichever way you want to represent it. This one went right 1 down 3, right? It went right 1 down 3. This one went left 4 down 5. So they actually have the same thing where they're both downward pointing. It's a little bit wider, so I tried to go a little bit outside that number right there. Right, this one went a little bit outside that one right there. Uh, but that would be it for graph P. That's done. So it's the same for G, H, and I. Letters are kind of random. But rise over run to try to figure out that dilation factor in the front. And if you're struggling with that, as long as you're getting the translation numbers and plus or minus depending if it's up or down it's still it's it's do, do your best uh, and let me know if you have more questions thank you